Today, Easter is the greatest feast on the church's calendar. We have, in, both in the Mass today, the Hague Dies, uh, which, when we sing at the Divine Office during this whole week, it's one big feast, whole octave. And the Hague Dies is, this is the day that the Lord has made. Uh, let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's from Psalm uh, 117. This is the day the Lord has made. Christmas, a great feast. We'll just contrast them briefly to see why this is the greater feast. Christmas has that note of sweetness and joy, because what do we have? We have this little baby. God became a man. See, the little baby Jesus, he's wrapped in swaddling clothes. There's his mother. There's St. Joseph, the shepherds, the animals. It's quiet. It's night. And we're rejoicing because God stooped down and became man for us. And the angels, of course, are singing about his glory in the heavens. So that's Christmas. It has that note of sweetness and joy. But unlike Christmas, Easter doesn't have that same kind of thing about sweetness and joy. We're not talking about a little baby all of a sudden. This is a triumphal feast in the literal, original sense of a Roman triumph. If you know what a triumph was... When the Romans would win in war, there was a great ceremony held when the army got back to Rome. And among other things, they'd come marching in. When the triumph was being held, there were all kinds of things, but to make it short, the Roman army had come marching in. Here they'd have all the treasures, all the booty, the war booty that they brought back. They're carrying it in front of the people to see, see what we did? This is what we've done. So they'd be doing this in. We've been victorious like that. Then they'd have all the prisoners chained up as slaves. And finally, the, 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 the enemy general, he'd be, he'd be at the back. Of, and then after that, here would come the, uh, the Roman uh, general, ride in a chariot led by white horses and so forth. There's ceremonies going on. They'd go up to the altar at the Temple of Jupiter. There'd be bulls sacrificed. They'd hand the, the, the general these, bl- these bowls of blood. He'd pour it on the altar to appease the god. And then he'd take and swap, swipe off the head of the enemy uh, commander. That was what a Roman triumph was. It was triumphal. That's what Easter is like. A few ideas of why. Think of what our Lord's just done during Holy Week. In the garden, he took all the sins of the world upon himself, was crushed down with all the sins, the sins of Adam to the very last sin before the crack of doom. He's been betrayed by a loved one. He's been abandoned by all his bishops except one, St. John. They all run away. His Pope denies him three times and also flees our holy patron, St. Peter. He's been abused, arrested, attacked, and beaten by his own people, the Jews. And to make that even a worse insult, his leaders actually know and have known since the beginning of his public ministry who he is and whom he represents. Then he's been beaten, mocked, scourged, and spit upon, and finally crucified by the rulers, the pagans, the Romans. Apparently, on Good Friday, Satan has triumphed. Holy Saturday, everything's quiet. It looks like the triumph of Satan. The victory of the forces of darkness and evil. Hell has overrun the world. Somehow, God has died. God died. He must have lost. God was killed by his enemies. He was killed. But on Easter Sunday, for the first and only time in history, we see the dead general actually rise back to life and win. We see who really won, who really triumphed, who really cut the head off all of his enemies. He won. Our Lord really won. As the Eastern Catholics sing at their Easter vigil at the end, Christ is risen from the dead, conquering death by death. He's triumphed over death, over sin, over Satan, over betrayal, 
over abuse, over suffering. By baptism, we've all been made members of his mystical body. We're members in his body. Like cells in the mystical body, it's his church of which he's the head. We've been incorporated into him. Because he's our head, because he's our general, that means that in this battle, we have also won if we don't betray him and go over to the enemy. We've won if we don't betray him. He conquered Satan. He conquered sin. He conquered death. And now that's what we're celebrating. That victory. The triumph of Easter is the secret of the martyrs. Every Catholic ought to spend a long time pondering over the martyrs. These are the men and the women that have such great faith that many of them go singing to their horrible deaths. Why? Because they realize what Easter really means. It means if we've been faithful to him, we share in that same triumphal victory, even though it looks like a complete disaster, even though it looks, naturally speaking, as if the forces of hell and the enemies of God and the people that hate the church have won. The martyrs know that. We should have a great devotion to them and pray for them to give us that kind of faith and that kind of belief in what our Lord is and what He's done. They'd go, they'd be filled with spiritual joy in spite of their suffering. They're filled with a holy zeal to follow in the bloody footsteps of their general and to conquer with Him. During these troubled times, as we all enter deeper in to the mystical passion, the passion of the mystical body of Christ, or before our eyes, it seems to die, suffered, mangled, crucified, attacked, spit upon, abandoned by the bishops and the priests and the faithful. During these troubled times, we need to have that kind of Easter faith that the martyrs had. We need to pray for that. During this Holy Mass, and every time you hear the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass, at the elevation of the precious blood, ask God to give you the faith and the zeal of the martyrs. Ask Him to give you the grace to live as a martyr. We don't ask for the grace to die as a martyr. That's a special God, grace that God gives to whom He will. But we ask for the grace to be faithful witnesses. That's what martyr means, to be faithful witnesses to the truth that Christ has risen. Indeed, He has risen.